how to use intuition in business decision making and never feel confused again. How to tap into your soul's mission with intuition. It's been proven that more intuitive people are much more successful. Here's exactly how to become intuitive and make better business decisions. So why is intuition important in business? One study showed that 81% of CEOs with high intuition scores doubled their businesses in five years, which is pretty impressive, right? The US Navy is actually investing around $4 million into helping sailors to refine their sixth sense because it's been proven that it's more important for soldiers to use intuition rather than intelligence when they're in high stress situations. So it's been proven that using your intuition in business will get you much better results. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to use your intuition in your business. So what is intuition? Intuition is the feeling that you know what the right thing is to do instinctively without the need for conscious reasoning. It is the gut feeling that something is either right or wrong, or perhaps it's a feeling that you get by picking up on somebody's energy, whether you can trust them or not. Or not. And it can also be an idea or a prompt that has popped into your head that encourages you to take a particular action or consider a certain strategy. So where does intuition come from? Intuition comes from three different sources, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your superconscious mind. And all three sources work together to give you the feeling of intuition. But psychologists will tell you that intuition only comes from the sub subconscious mind. And those into spirituality will tell you that intuition only comes from God, the universe, the soul, or the superconscious mind. And other people will tell you that intuition comes from past experiences and habits that are noticed via the, the conscious mind and are developed based on experiences that you've had over and over again. However, all three types of people are right, but they are missing all of the other sources of intuition. And I like to give different names to the intuition that comes from different sources. So here are the names that I give to the different types of intuition that comes from the three different sources. So number one is the word insight. Insight is the term that I use to explain the type of intuition that comes from the superconscious mind. The superconscious mind gives us new ideas and insights that we never would have known about ourselves based on our own experiences. So if it's a new idea, it's insight, it's come from intuition. The second term is belief system and that is the term that I use to explain the intuition that comes from the subconscious mind. Our beliefs influence our perception of the world and if you've previously had a bad experience you are likely to have a negative feeling about the same thing happening again in the future. Presence is the term that I use to explain the type of intuition that comes from the conscious mind. When you get present and just notice everything that's going on around you and see things exactly as they are, you will feel totally differently about things than if you were only thinking about the past or the future when it comes to making decisions. And I believe that we all have a purpose on earth. I believe that our souls have a mission to complete. And I believe that we are not left alone to complete this mission and we are co-creating our results with our higher power. And the reason why we have intuition is that it is a method of tapping into our higher power for guidance as to how to fulfill our mission. How to use intuition in business decision making and never feel confused again. When it comes to making decisions in business, I like to think of the decisions in terms of a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, there is purpose. Underneath that, there is core priorities. Underneath that, there is personal values. Underneath that is business model. And underneath that is everything else. 
And what you do is you start at the top of the pyramid with the most important decisions that you need to make. And when you make those important decisions, it often eliminates the need to make any further decisions further down the pyramid. For example, if you first of all decide on your purpose, which is your reason for being alive, so that's the most important priority in your life, this will eliminate the need to make a lot of other decisions because you simply ask whether the new opportunity or the new decision aligns with your purpose or not. And if it doesn't, you automatically rule it out. If you use your intuition to make decisions at a higher level, you'll eliminate a lot of the decisions that you need to make at a lower level. And the main way to use intuition to make decisions at a high level is to allow your superconscious mind to speak to you. And I'm going to show you ways to tune into your superconscious mind in a minute. So stay tuned for that. Here are seven questions you should ask yourself whenever you have a decision to make in your business. Asking these seven questions will help you sharpen your intuition so you will be able to listen more closely to your gut feelings and make faster decisions in the future. Number one, will the outcome of this decision align with your life purpose? If the answer is no, then the answer to the decision should probably be no, because living your purpose should always be your highest priority. You may feel your life purpose right now is to, say, help children improve their health by taking up running. And if someone asks you to help with their business, which involves helping couples to improve their marriages, this is not in alignment with your life purpose. So the answer should be no. Question number two. Will the outcome of this decision align with your core priorities in life? So core priorities are the five things that are most important to you and your life. And if the answer is no, then your decision should also be no, because core priorities are based on doing things every day that are a priority for you. So if you have a priority to, say, spend time with family every day, and you are presented with an opportunity which involves you working away most of the time, you are going to be out of alignment with your core priorities. So that's not something you want to do. Number three, will the outcome of this decision align with your personal values? If no, then the answer should be no. Going against your personal values will never lead to success. People's values may include things like having integrity, keeping your promises, etc. And you will always regret going against your personal values. Number four, will the outcome of this decision go against your business model? If the answer is yes, then you need to take a little bit more time to decide whether to change your entire business model based on this decision. And this is not something that you should decide very quickly. So the answer should probably be no. Your business model may be based on, say, doing something like speaking engagements all over the world. And if someone is trying to get you to set up an online agency, then this wouldn't be in alignment with your business model. Number five, ask yourself if someone else was to make the best decision for you, which option would you be the happiest with? Now this sounds a bit silly, but sometimes we are actually scared to make the right decisions and we have to go with our guts as to what excites us the most. And if you could imagine someone else making the decision on your behalf, this can really help you to make the decision that's right for you. Number six, are you experiencing negative feelings about the outcome of this decision? And it depends what the negative feelings are. For example, if you are worried about your own ego, then that's not a good reason not to do something. Whatever the negative feelings are, work through them by asking yourself, are they really true and what proof do you have? Talk it through with other people. Most of the time, if you are getting a negative feeling other than fear, you should probably say no to the decision. For example, if you have a desire to teach at a local college, but you feel scared to do it, However, it is in line with your life purpose and it is in line with your business model and your core priorities and you have a desire to be good at speaking, 
on this occasion, it makes sense to override your negative feelings and feel the fear and do it anyway. However, if you have a bad feeling about working with someone, you should probably listen to that unless you can identify where your belief system is holding you back and you can overcome your own belief system. Number seven, is this decision something that I even need to be making at all? Can I eliminate the need to make this decision in the first place by doing something like repeating something that I'm already doing or getting someone else to make that decision? For example, say somebody is trying to sell you a program that helps you to choose different business outfits for each day of the week, aligned with your personality, say. Is it possible for you to decide that you're actually going to wear exactly what you want, what you choose to wear, and you are going to just decide on one outfit that you absolutely love and buy multiple different versions of this one outfit and make that your work uniform by wearing the same thing every day, therefore eliminating the need to make daily decisions about what you wear at all. And I also believe that we don't have to worry too much about making the wrong decisions. A lot of our so-called mistakes are meant to happen because it shows us what we don't want. It helps us to share our wisdom with other people and it helps them to avoid the mistakes that we've made. And it also gives us more clarity around what it is that we want to do. So never beat yourself up about bad decisions that you feel you've made. You are exactly where you are meant to be and you've done exactly what you were meant to do. Here are nine ways that you can practice becoming more intuitive. Receive insights from your superconscious mind get present to what is actually going on around you and bend your belief system in your favour. Number one, ask for guidance. Pray or intend that you will receive the answer to your question. Number two, listen to the answer. There's no point in asking a question if you don't listen to the answer. Listen to the answer by spending time alone every day being quiet. You could either be still and meditate or you could go for a walk and tune in to the sounds of nature. Either way, the superconscious mind speaks to you in the silence. Number three, feel other people's energy. When you are with other people, practice noticing their tonality and body language and tune in to what you are picking up from them. Number four, feel the energy in environments. Get present to noticing the energy in a room when you walk into it. Notice how you feel about the environment. Do you want to stay or do you want to leave? Number five, practice something creative every day, such as writing, music or art, as this helps you tune in to your superconscious mind. Number six, spend time journaling every day. Ask yourself every day what's holding you back and ask yourself the reasons why you are thinking this way. Number seven, bend your belief system by deciding what you want to believe and repeating it over and over again until you believe it. Number eight, feel the fear and do it anyway. Practice taking action to do things you've always wanted to do but are too scared to do because your ego is holding you back. Number nine, be balanced. Focus on your health, your relationships, fun, fulfillment and creativity. You are incapable of following your intuition when you are out of balance. So it's very important to get into balance. So I'm just curious, have you ever struggled to follow your own intuition? A lot of the time our intuition can get blocked by our belief systems that is holding us back. And I've totally been there myself. A few years ago, I was so fed up, overworked, and nothing I was doing was working for me. I kept getting led from one new business strategy to the next, and I wasn't able to follow my own intuition at all. I had totally crowded it out with overwork and desperation. And after a lot of experimentation and some soul searching, I finally discovered where I'd been going wrong. And once I learned how my belief system was holding me back and bent my belief system towards what I actually wanted, I was able to feel confident to start a business that I had been putting off for years and double my business revenue on my passive business that had been static for a very long time. And I have shared my system for using your belief system to make more money while doing work that you adore, working the number of hours you choose, 
all without hustling or striving in my signature course called Dream Business Manifestation. And in this course, I take you on a 30 day journey from manifesting being the person that you want to be to manifesting your dream business and manifesting the money that you desire to make. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash manifest. I'm also so excited to share my masterclass with you called Double Your Revenue Masterclass. And if you've tried all of the strategies to grow your revenue and it's still not increasing, this free masterclass will help you easily get to the next level. And I am sharing three extremely powerful manifestation techniques to help you manifest your first sale and double your revenue. And this free masterclass is part of my dream business manifestation course. So grab it now free for a limited time only by going to kathkyle.com forward slash double. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.